with a whopping 19 game passes totaling in at a combined 6,300 Robux, Multi-Crew Tank Combat 4 definitely has a lot to offer when it comes to game passes. But while each game pass offers something new to the game, not all are created equally. Today I'll be taking a look at each game pass and see which ones are worth your hard earned Robux. So first, I just want to address that this tier list is going to be broken up into two separate videos. The first part being modern game passes, which is this video, and the second video being World War II game passes. Each game pass is going to be sorted into three tiers. You got the top tier, which are the game passes that I believe are the most bang for your buck. The middle tier, which are game passes that are a little silly, more gimmicky, definitely not as useful as the top tier. And then we have the bottom tier, which are the ones that I completely recommend you avoid it at all costs. And then for each vehicle, I'll tell you the pros and their cons and why I think it fits into said tier. Now before we jump right into the list, I just want to make a quick disclosure and that's that these rankings are based purely on my opinion. Just because I put a vehicle in top tier doesn't mean it's the best vehicle. Same with bottom tier, if I say something's bottom tier, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a terrible vehicle. So with this addressed, let's hop right into the list with top tier. Starting off our list here with a banger, we have a pretty superb tier 3 main battle tank with a type 90. The Type 90 is not only fast, but also very maneuverable for all sorts of terrain. It also has a 120mm turret, which puts it on par with most high tier main battle tanks. It not only combines this high caliber with a 4 second autoloader. The Type 90 is also a great vehicle for solo crewing in, as not only does the 4 second autoloader allow for quick shots, but the gunner seat is easy to reach from the driver's seat. Perfect for people like me who don't have any friends. The only downside with the Type 90 is that it's kind of a glass cannon. Its armor is much lighter than other main battle tanks, especially the M1 Abrams. Other than that, it's definitely an excellent all around main battle tank that lives up to the 300 Robux price tag. Our second top tier tank is the HSTVL. This is definitely one of the most unique tanks you can have. It's unparalleled in design. Much like the Type 90, the HSTVL is extremely fast, easily reaching the 50 km per hour mark in about 5 to 8 seconds. It also has its unique turret that fires 26 75mm rounds without the need to reload once. However, just like the Type 90, it's also pretty much a glass cannon, relatively thin armor and can easily catch on fire from an AP round or two. Not only that, but once you use all of your ammo, you're out for good. So if you do use the HSTVL, make sure you have a spare ammo crate on you. Other than that, this is another solid game pass that is definitely worth the price. Finally, to wrap up the top tiers, we have a surprise here with the Black Knight. Unlike the rest of the vehicles on this game pass, the Black Knight is only available for pre-order. Which begs the question, is it worth it to spend 500 Robux for a tank that you can't even use? Well, to some surprise, I'd actually say yes. With the Challenger 2 expected to appear in the next major update, the Black Knight takes an already solid tier 3 main battle tank and takes it to new heights. And while you might think that the Black Knight is a tier 5 tank, you'd be just surprised to know that it's actually a tier 4, which means you can use it much earlier in the game. Combine this lower rank with the Street Fighter add-on which adds Brimfire ATGMs and you've got yourself an absolute force to be reckoned with. And yes, 
the Black Knight does come with a tea kettle. And now we start with the mid-tier vehicles. The game passes that they aren't terrible, but definitely not as good as the top tier ones. If anything, these are the game passes you buy because you just want to mess around a little bit and have a little bit of fun. And I think there's no better game pass that exemplifies this than the LTSE. The LTSE is the epitome of absolute chaos. It's a one man army and it absolutely destroys IFVs and uh, APCs. However, just like said IFVs and APCs, the LTSE is built pretty poorly. If you leave your sides or back exposed, it's fair game for anyone to blow you up. So definitely don't try to take on a medium battle tank with this guy, cause you'll actually get blown to bits. The LTSE isn't gonna get you MVP, but it is a lot of fun to drive around in what's essentially a weasel on steroids. i definitely say that 200 Robux is a good deal for this game pass. Yet another example of a silly game pass vehicle, it's the MTLB Anti-Air. This game pass is unique, as not only is it the only one that's tier 1, but it's also the only game pass that can be spawned by fish. The MTLB Anti-Air gets mid-tier because, well, it's an anti-air gun. It's a very situational. So unless you're being swarmed by a bajillion helicopters every round, I really don't see a point in getting the MTLB anti-air. However, I do have to add some praise for the 57mm add-on for it. That thing is absolute chaos, but you really need a loader in order to fully enjoy using it. In my honest opinion, I think 300 Robux for anti-air is a bit of a too high of a price, but it's definitely not the worst game pass you can buy. And finally, to wrap with the mint here. We have the T64BV. The T64BV has its benefit that while it may seem like a tier 3 or a tier 4 tank, it's actually a tier 2. This is definitely a tank you want to use for the early game as it definitely outclasses a lot of the tier 1 and the tier 2s. And combine that with the 2017 add-on which adds extra ERA and thermals for the commander, it's definitely a solid tank to use for any part of the match, honestly. However, the problem with this game pass is that the T64BM is already in the game. And while the T64BM is a little bit worse, you do get it for free. And while you can use the BV on Hawk as well, instead of just Eagle like the BM, there's definitely a lot better choices for tier 3 main battle tanks, especially my favorite, the T80U. So while the T64BV it's in a bad tank, I just think there's better game passes to buy. Which is why I put it in mid tier. Alright, so this is a bit of a controversial opinion, but I really think the BTR4 is a terrible game pass. But before I jump into what's so bad about it, I will tell you what's good about it. The BTR-4 has a 30mm autocannon and two ATGMs, and a Grom turret add-on adds an additional 30mm AGS. This setup is pretty good for an APC, but that's the problem. It's an APC. The BTR-4 is in this weird middle ground where it's trying to be an IFE, but also trying to be an APC. It's important to point out that the BTR-4 is currently only spawnable by Eagle. The fact that the BTR-4 is exclusive to Eagle is kind of the problem though. You see, if you're going to use an IFE on Eagle, you'd probably just end up using the Bradley. The Bradley is one tier lower, which means you can use it much earlier in the game than the BTR-4. The Bradley also comes with plenty of add-ons that make it much more viable in the late game than the BTR-4. So then what about using it as an APC? Well, let, let's be honest, nobody really uses an APC to be an APC. And then finally, to make it even worse, it's not even good for solo crewing, 
The gunner seat is a much harder to get to from the driver's seat than other IFVs. With the Bradley and the BTR2, the driver's seat is directly in front of the gunner seat. But with the BTR4, you kind of have to walk around a wall to get to the gunner seat, which is definitely not ideal. And this last one's just a nitpick, but I think it's kind of ugly too, so. So in conclusion, the BTR4 is an APC that tries to be an IFE, but isn't as good as his lower tier counterpart, the Bradley. So unless you're someone who really likes BTRs but doesn't want to play as hot and are fortunate to have a friend that will help operate it, I would say that this game pass is a waste of Robux. And now finally, the worst game pass in all of MTC. It should come as no surprise if you see my previous video, but it's the one and only T90A. Oh boy, where do I even start with this one? I'm not gonna go into complete details like my previous video, but I will give you sort of the, the short version of why it sucks so much. The T90A is essentially just a reskinned T72B3. They drive practically identical. They have the same acceleration and max speed, and they have the same amount of features as each other. The only difference between the two is that the T90A has a completely different turret, as well as the Chateaus that are built into the turret. However, as I'll soon address, it really doesn't make it any better than the T72B3. To help demonstrate this, I'm going to address some comments from my T90A video. One of the big mistakes I made in my T90A was not addressing the Chateaus. I know most of my comments were wondering if they were purely cosmetic or if they actually worked. Well, let's find out. In order to test what the Chateaus do though, we need to know what they work against. From what I've learned, Chateaus only really work against Itos and Cornets. So that means the Chateaus doesn't work against ATGMs, and it also doesn't work against RPGs, but that's kind of obvious because they're not laser guided. So let's test them out on the toes that are placeable from the engineer class. In our testing, we found out the Shatoras performed exactly as they should. They, each of the tow missiles went around the tank instead of hitting it. So yes, the Shatora does work, but it isn't going to work against ATGMs, as in this example here with the Bradley. In this case, the ATGM completely obliterated the T90A. Another comment that stood out to me was the comparing of the rotation speed of the turret of the T90A and the T72B3. So for this test we've got the T72B3 on the left and we've got the T90A on the right. And we're going to see which one can complete a full rotation the fastest. Wow, quite a surprise here. The T72B3 completed a full rotation almost twice as fast as the T90A. Especially more when you consider that the new feature of the T98 is the turret. Alright, one more comment I have to address. This one's about the better shells add-on. As you can see with the infographic I've made, you can see that the additions with the better shell add-on is the improvement of the ATGM to tandem, the addition of proximity fuse, and the APFSD has been upgraded to 3BM60. While the 3BM60 is an improvement over the 3BM46, you're only getting 50 millimeters more penetration. The proximity shells aren't really that useful, they're really more for shooting helicopters down. And the upgrade of the ATGM to a tandem is definitely a solid improvement over the regular one. So all in all, I would say that, yeah, it does improve the T90, but I wouldn't really say it makes a big super difference, you know what I mean? So with those comments addressed, I just want to get to the bottom line on the T90A. It's, it's a scam. It's a total ripoff. You're essentially paying 400 Robux, which is up there with one of the most expensive game passes already, and you're getting a T72B3, but with a different turret. Not a different hole or a gun, just a different turret. Yes, the T90 comes with Shatoras, but guess what? You, if you're an engineer, 
you can put them on your tank for free. And with the better shells add on, why not just get a higher tier tank? You know what I mean? So, because there's so many better free options than the T90A, it's the reason why I think it's one of the worst game passes in the game. Alright, we're gonna do a quick recap of what's good and what's not good. The top tier, we have the HSTVL, the Type 90, and the Black Knight. These are the vehicles that are the most enjoyable to use and are definitely worth purchasing. Now for the mid tier, we have the MTLB Anti-Air, the LTSE, and the T64BV. These Game Pass vehicles aren't as good as the previous tier, but they're really made more for just messing around. In. And finally, bottom tier, with the BTR4 and the T90A. These are the Game Pass vehicles that I believe are absolutely not worth buying. Because I feel like you can have better experiences with free alternatives. And I just want to reiterate one more time that these rankings are based completely on my own opinion. I'm coming from the perspective of someone who doesn't like to spend money. Like all Game Passes, your mileage varies greatly. You might enjoy a Game Pass more than I did or vice versa. But hopefully, for those considering purchasing a Game Pass, this video helped you understand what is and isn't worth buying. Hey guys, I just want to say thank you for watching this video. It really, really means a lot to me. I know this video is really delayed. I wanted to get it out a month ago, but I'm in the process of moving and uh, I've been really lazy too. <laughs> so, there's that. I'm planning on focusing on much shorter uh, MTC content, so definitely subscribe so you can stay tuned for that stuff. And once again, I just want to say thank you for watching.